Friends, my name is Pastor Phil, and it is my privilege to welcome you to this year's Kids Christmas Program. I think they asked me to do it because I was a kid one time. And I always love the Kids Christmas Program. Of course, this year it's a bit different. Usually we pack all together, fill the entire church, people from all over the triangle, different cultures, different backgrounds, celebrating Jesus our Savior. Can't do that. That's what's online. But you know what? This is going to be an incredible reminder that Jesus still lives. Even though we are far apart, it's as if we're together. Greater than that. Even though we're far apart, our Savior is near. Friends, enjoy the kids' Christmas program. I'm praying for you. The first song is Joy to the World because as we will be learning throughout the program, a tr the true joy of Christmas is a joy for all people in the whole world. Because on the first Christmas, God sent the Savior to all nations, all people in the whole wide world. God tells us in John 3.16, For God so loves the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, he says, God desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Interestingly, the words joy to the world were written by a man in one country and put to music by a man years later in another country. However, the melody was based on a musical composition by yet another person in another country. This is a great example of how people in different nations and different times both experienced the joy of our Savior born at Christmas. Joy to the World was written in England by Isaac Watts as a poem reflected on Psalm 98 which says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Please join us now and let the joy in your heart about a Savior born for you and all the other people flow out in a beautiful song along with all the other children.
So Joseph also went up to Nazareth in Galilee and Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to be registered with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Candles up. It's time to sing happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jesus. Christmas Eve service would be complete for most of us without the hymn Silent Night. But even though this hymn is very popular now, it had a humble beginning. In 1818 Austria, Pastor Joseph Moore spent Christmas Eve visiting the modest home of a wood chopper and his wife, who had just given birth to a baby. Inspired by the miracle of the birth, Moore struggled home through the snowdrifts and spent the night writing a poem. In the morning, he shared it with a church musician in a neighboring town. The musician wrote music for the poem, and after a quick rehearsal, it was sung on Christmas Day by the church choir, accompanied by the guitar. Silent Night begins with the most intimate of Christmas scenes, Mary holding the holy infant so tender and mild. People of every nation on earth can relate to the image of a mother holding her firstborn child. People of every tribe and tongue can imagine the emotions and love felt at the moment, especially if you're a parent. Evidence of this is found in the fact that native people of the Solomon Islands sing Jesus Loves Me with U.S. sailors, including the pre-presidential John F. Kennedy, whom they helped to rescue and return to the U.S. fleet in 1943. This Jesus, the savior of the nations, was the sweet baby in Mary's arms who defeated the enemies of God and man.
there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will be to all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company, heavenly host, appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. For him, angels we have heard him highest and all thanks to him. It was slung in the day when Latin was the only truly acceptable language in the church, but also when people wanted to sing a song in their own tongue. So, this hymn is one of the first bilingual hymns. Even in our translation, we sing the stanzas in English and the refrain in Latin. Much as the French would have sung the stanzas in French and the refrain as Gloria in Excelis Deo in Latin as we do. Angels we have heard on high, and trust the singing of the angels in the lofty mountains with the call to worship of the lowly shepherds. What an interesting combination. The noble and the peasant, the celestial generals, and the terrestrial privates of God's army. The high and the mighty, the poor and the lowly, all have come together to sing the praises of the one born in Bethlehem. There is something moving about our lowly voices being joined together in song with the voices of God's army, his heavenly host. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to So they hurried up to find Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. The hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, encourages us to do the same. We have also heard the great news about our Savior born, so let's be filled with joy and worship, born the King of Angels. The exact origins of this beautiful hymn are debatable. The lyrics were originally written in Latin, and many scholars say that it was first written by King John IV of Portugal. However, it was first published but later by an English exile, John Francis Wade. It was also published by many other people in other countries over the years. That makes this hymn another great example of people from many nations and from both extremes of status. From a king to an exile, all united in adoration and worship of our Savior.
And when they had seen him, they spread the word of what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed what the shepherds said to them. Every treasure, all these things, come needy in a heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. Our next song is called El Burrito Sabanero. It's a common Christmas song, sung in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, and it means my little donkey. And the song is all about the excitement of going to Bethlehem to worship baby Jesus. And so in Spanish this year with our precious lambs, we learned this song, at least the refrain, and it goes, Si me ven, si me ven, voy camino de Belén, which means if you see me, I'll be going to Bethlehem. So we've sung it with excitement, and we've done some of the dancing with excitement um, because our Savior is born. Go Tell It on the Mountain is a famous African-American spiritual that dates back to the early 1800s. Originally, the hymn had an additional verse that remembered Moses leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. Just as God has rescued the Israelites from Egypt, in the same way Jesus sets us free from the oppression of sin, death, and the devil giving us freedom and new life. If the sun
sets you free, you'll be free indeed. That is exciting news, and the song captures the excitement of the shepherds. It encourages us to also go tell it that Jesus Christ is born. special hymn to people all around the world and has been translated into just about every language. It was originally written by Anna Bartlett in the U.S. in the 1800s as a comforting poem for a dying child. What comforting words we find in Yes, Jesus Loves Me, the Bible tells me so. After Jesus Loves Me was set to music, in 1862, it became a comfort to people across the whole world. Lyrics from Jesus Loves Me were also used in China during intense communist persecution of Christians in 1972. Um, a Chinese believer sent a coded message to a friend that said, The this, I know people are well. Rather than being stamped out, the number of Christians in China continued to grow from 4 million in 1969 to 65 million in 2010. Jesus loves everybody even when it's hard. Bye-bye. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God explains his great love for all people. In his great love, he promises hope and a future to his people regardless of what's going on. For I know the pl the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, 
plans to give you hope and a future. Jesus was me the sign of, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. to strengthen your faith and we encourage you to share this important message of true hope found in God's word with others this Christmas and New Year. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Okay, wait. You were just very nice and loud. I want to hear your nice loud voices. Let's try it again. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for our Christmas program. He was born to save people from all nations, from kings and presidents to people without a home country. Jesus was born to save you. May this truth bring you real hope, real joy, and real peace, no matter what is happening now or in the new year. Oh. Mm -hmm. 